Hi, and welcome. It's Patrick Donahoe. Ongoing immediate access to your money, which is often referred to as liquidity, is one of the most compelling benefits of the wealth maximization account, which is the foundational vehicle, financial vehicle of the perpetual wealth strategy. Now, unlike other types of investments and investment products, you don't have to forfeit the use of your cash to make this strategy work for you. In fact, for some clients, regularly leveraging cash value is actually the backbone of the strategy that they've adopted to grow their wealth. Now, today we're going to talk about a, a common misunderstanding of how this benefit works, as well as some of the wise and unwise uses of the loan provision. So let's get started. Welcome to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy Podcast. So the policy loan is one of the unique features of the wealth maximization account. And looking at the benefits that we uh, have talked about in previous podcasts, the certainty of it all, the tax efficiency of it all, the growth of it all, the interest and dividends, there's lots of, there's lots of benefits. We're going to get into asset protection as a future, you know, future episode. But the loan provision, I would say, is is by far one of the one of the best. Now, you know, if it didn't exist, it'd still be a, a viable you know viable viable vehicle, a great long term savings uh, plan. Uh, and people used it as such, and that is where the loan provision came from. So one of the original groups of uh, groups of people that were using these types of strategies and financial products uh, were farmers, and they, as you can imagine. Farming, you know, it's not a month to month paycheck or a, a, a bi weekly pay period. You know, they have one pay period, which is harvest. And, and obviously, there's money needed in between, whether it's to, uh, you know, do the, the planting uh, and then the nurturing. Uh, and then ultimately, harvest is when you get paid. So, farmers were using insurance as their family savings vehicle and it then influenced the insurance companies to give them a loan against the those values for things that they needed during the year and then finally when harvest season came around then the uh the farmers were able to pay back that loan so it became a uh, a common practice and eventually uh, all insurance companies adopted it and today it is a guaranteed provision of these types of policies uh, that's built into the contract, so it's guaranteed. So looking at what it means, the insurance company will loan you their other money against your policy. So the policy continues to grow, continues to earn interest. They will lend you their other money, and you essentially put your policy up as collateral. Now, there are many banks that will do uh, the same thing. They may not offer the same uh, pro uh, the characteristics, terms of the loan, uh, but they will give you a loan, business, personal, uh, in really large amounts against the actual policy, the policy being collateral. So the policy stays intact. It earns interest, uh, it earns dividends, it continues to, to grow in that respect, but yet you are able to put it up as collateral uh, for a bank loan. But I'm going to talk today mostly about the policy loan, which is a loan that comes from the insurance company. So it is a, it is a private loan. It doesn't appear on your credit report. So when you take a loan, they're not going to uh, report your payments. Uh, they're not going to report amounts. Uh, they're not going to report uh, frequency of, of use. It, they don't report anything. It's a, it's a private loan between you, a private person, and the insurance company, a private, private, uh, uh, private company. And looking at the you know, other reasons, I would, I would assume it's because of how flexible the terms are. So the terms are there is no guarantee. There is no... Uh, application. You don't have to, to tell the insurance company what you're using the money uh, for. Uh, you essentially request it and they give it to you. And it's a very quick process. And most of it's done uh, online now. And then when you receive uh, the money, they will bill you interest every year. And then they'll also allow you to defer that, that interest. They don't expect any payments. That's kind of the default. And we'll get into you know, making payments in just a, in just a second. Uh, but this is where I would say when people uh, avoid debt, uh, oftentimes it's because of the fear of not being able to pay the debt, losing their home, losing their car. There's this fear of loss associated with it. But the policy, you're not going to lose your policy because you don't make loan payments. Okay, 
So that is that's something that's very uh, very interesting and very attractive of the loan uh, of the loan provision. And then the interest rate is very low. If you look at another loan that you didn't have to qualify for, that gave you flexible uh, terms like the ones I just mentioned, you would assume that you know interest rates would probably be higher than credit card interest rates. But the the loan interest rate that, that insurance companies charge is typically off of what the Moody's uh, AAA investment grade corporate bond index uh, is, is at. So very very low interest rates, especially especially today. Uh, and it, you know the idea is it's a, a benefit for uh, anyone really if you're using this to magnify your potential retirement income in the in the future or you're using it as kind of growing your assets as your foundational base you're using it for the loan provision okay all all the loan provision applies to anyone because of the liquidity factor you know that your money continues to grow you know that uh, it is going to compound it's going to earn interest uh, tax efficient interest but you have access to that money so that state of mind i think is very very healthy when it comes to your other activities, whether it's your professional pursuits, your business pursuits, your investment pursuits, uh, et cetera, you know that the money is going to be there when you need it. Uh, so, looking at you know, I would say the the advancements that insurance companies have made regarding uh, regarding loans, uh, many people are, are still not using this uh, this benefit. Uh, they're setting up insurance for the traditional reasons. Uh, they're not necessarily using these liquidity provisions. Uh, it's, but insurance companies, nonetheless have uh, made some advancements as far as the time in which they're processing it. When I first started out and created Paradigm, they were still doing paper checks. Uh, so it has uh, changed uh, significantly, uh, significantly since then. All insurance companies are, are doing electronic uh, transfers as well as payments. And some even have very uh, modern online portals. So it's, uh, it's really it's great. It's great to see that it makes it even, uh, even better. Now let me get into the again the common uses of uh, of cash value. So first and foremost, you know I would say that the policies are one of the primary savings vehicles uh, within the perpetual wealth strategy. It's your foundation. Uh, the hierarchy of wealth, which is discussed in a couple chapters of the book, uh, is, it illustrates that you know we keep it as our foundational asset, similar to how banks and corporations uh, keep it as theirs. And again, looking at uh, you know the the use once you have established that foundation, whether it's you know a, a reserve, uh, an emergency fund of a certain number of months of your expenses, when you exceed that, when you start to exceed that, or when you uh, start to make more money and are are opening up multiple policies, the idea is to treat a money uh, the money above and beyond your emergency uh, fund or your uh, your safety capital. Uh, as an opportunity fund, where you're now looking for opportunities to use the loan provision. So these opportunities are all over the place. I'll, I'll use personal purchases first. So I think the loan provision really allows you to uh, have a comparative tool. What I mean by that is the policy loan, in essence, a great rule of thumb is that it's to be used in place of another bank loan, both with uh, being at better terms or or better interest rates. And I say this because when somebody goes into a bank to buy a car, they go to buy a home or uh, or otherwise a business loan, et cetera, the, you don't know if you're getting the best terms. You don't, you're not sure if you're getting the best deal. And I came across this you know, maybe a lot, maybe seven, eight years ago when banks, uh, specifically the banks associated with car loans, and, and and would give you these man you know manufacturer uh, deals of really low interest rates, some as low as you know zero percent, point nine percent, one point nine percent, two point nine percent. They were doing it with kind of a sleight of hand, and so they would offer these you know teaser these low interest rates, and people were buying cars, uh, you know, in, in in droves. But if you looked at the fine print of the purchase contract. What these manufacturers were doing is if you did use the incentive interest rate, 0%, 0.9% or whatever, they would add the, uh, or they would they would not uh, give you a rebate, uh, rebate. So if you went in and purchased the car in cash, you would get a, a specific rebate, which would give you a purchase price of the car uh, at a certain amount. If you went and used their incentive financing, they did not give you this manufacturer's rebate. Uh, therefore, the purchase price of the car was higher. 
So what this loan provision does is when you go in and or the you know the ability to take a policy loan, you can go into that type of transaction and ask better questions. What is the purchase price if I use this way? What is the purchase price if I use this way? And then you can start to see you know if you're getting a good uh, good deal or not. Uh, and and I've done that. I've I've used policy loans for uh, ca- multiple cars. I've used it. Uh, also for uh, many real estate deals, uh, personal purchases, a ton of business uh, business purchases. But when you go when you go in and you actually determine whether or not you're going to use a policy loan, first off, I think the rule of thumb, as I mentioned, is some is a purchase that you would otherwise have used a bank for. Okay. Uh, the second is for a business opportunity, an investment opportunity, and I also think that the policy loan plays a similar role as it does as it did in the example I gave of the car. As you go into an investment and you have, you know, cash value that's earning, you know, let's say just rounding uh, and uh, long-term internal rate of return of five five percent, tax-free, net of fees, net of everything, okay, that I would say, comparatively speaking, depending on your tax bracket, could be, you know, eight eight percent, and it's uh, as far as what you would have to earn after tax uh, or before tax somewhere else. So that gives you a benchmark as to, okay, what type of deal am I getting into? What's the interest rate? What are the terms? What's the risk level? Because obviously, with a, a policy, you know, being as tier one uh, status, meaning it's really safe, has a high degree of certainty, and you're earning what the equivalent investment or yield would be at, you know, the eight eight percent or so. Now, if it's ten percent, is it really worth taking on that risk for just, you know, maybe a a, a gross two percent more, or sorry, a net two percent more? Uh, it, Maybe, maybe not. But this again allows you to weigh those weigh those options. And when it does make sense, now you can use the principle of arbitrage, which is using the loan provision, which gives you a loan at at four and three quarters, five percent, six percent, and then now invest in something, uh, a real estate project, a business opportunity uh, at fifteen percent. Okay. Now you have that degree of arbitrage, which is you know paying six and earning earning fifteen, uh, and leverage. I'm not going to get into all that today, but it's a it's a powerful concept, and it allows you know your money in the policy to continue to grow, but yet capitalize on these opportunities. And so that's why we often call it the uh, the and asset. That you're not choosing between a policy and a real estate deal, or a policy and a uh, business opportunity. You're able to do both. Now, another thing, too, that I think is interesting is there's this built-in accountability. And, and I would say, you know, today, most people want to do the right thing financially, but there isn't a whole lot of accountability associated with what they do. Uh, so I ultimately look at my financial statement as my scorecard. It's what tells me if I'm making progress or not. Uh, when it comes to using the, the, the policy, the policy, first and foremost, is my systematic savings accounts, right? My emergency fund. Then I keep my opportunity fund there. Uh, when I do take advantage of real estate deals or I take advantage of business opportunities, I document it as such and use a loan to essentially capitalize those deals and the cash flow associated with those deals, uh, the return associated with those deals in the future. Okay, will pay back first all of the basis into you know paying off the policy loan before I consider the money above and beyond uh, you know profit. Right, so if I invested fifty thousand dollars in a deal, and you know it's you know, cash flowing every month two hundred, three hundred, five hundred, I'm I am not going to consider that deal profitable until I either sell it, pay back the loan, and then consider that profit, or get cash flow to the point where it pays back that principal amount. Then I would consider it profit. So it keeps you it keeps you accountable from an investment standpoint or a business standpoint, but but from a personal standpoint, this is where things can get tricky. Because the loan provision in and of itself uh, doesn't really hold you accountable because you don't have to make any payments and you can defer the interest. And so that's why we recommend if you use it to purchase a car or do you know something else from a business standpoint or something personal, then uh, creating your own amortization schedule and setting up systematic payments until the loan is, uh, is paid off Uh, I would say is a healthy thing to do. It will keep you accountable to using the strategy the way it was intended to be to be used. Uh, Okay, so a few more a few more things. So I'm I'm going to address those who are using this tool, and their goal isn't necessarily uh, retirement income. 
I would say the main discipline is, you know, the idea of treating your financial life as a, as a business, as a business. Uh, I, I find this very beneficial to me, especially, uh, you look at where your income is coming from, where your expenses are. That's where you have, uh, your profit, uh, profit and loss. Uh, you have a balance sheet, right? Which is assets and, and liabilities and hobby, hopefully having equity or a positive net worth, uh, is the goal. That's your scorecard. That's your fi- That's your financial statement, right? So looking at, you know, the accountability associated with, if you have, you know, money that's in cash value, but you can also borrow against it. Okay, you have an asset, but once you borrow, now you have a liability and it's ensuring that you have the cash flow sufficient to pay back that liability. So I think the accountability factor is huge because the big benefit associated with uh, policies is that it, it is that and asset. Uh, 401ks are, are not that way. Uh, other type of long-term savings accounts are not that way. It plays one role. It has one purpose. Uh, this can have a multitude of pur- purposes. Uh, the first purpose, obviously, is savings and systematic savings. Uh, the second purpose is your, it could be your line of credit, your your bank in a sense. Uh, but then, you know, it's going to be your long-term uh, or short-term savings, just as much as is it going to be your, uh, your long-term savings. Uh, and then uh, and I'll transition now into uh, the discipline associated with uh, those that, that uh, are, planning on either partially retiring or, or fully, uh, fully, uh, fully retiring. So looking at the uh, retirement question, you know, a couple of the strategies that I talked about in, uh, in the book, one was the covered asset. The other was the volatility buffer. So these are two strategies where you can make massive, massive improvements to the uh, amount of income that's available to assets that you have already accumulated. Now, there are these models out there that are known as Monte Carlo models, and these Monte Carlo models are essentially uh, mathematical in nature and give you an idea of what you can take from a, a given portfolio or a given a given asset on an ongoing basis without running out of money. So there's some other factors in there. But looking at using insurance as the foundational asset, the legacy asset, asset that's going to be passed on, it allows you to really capitalize on the other assets that you have. So we try to teach clients and get to the point where you have uh, a one-to-one ratio of your permanent death benefit to your other assets. And that one-to-one ratio really allows you to maximize any possible income associated with those other assets and delegate your policy as your legacy asset. That's what's going to get transferred. And now it opens the door to using you know, reverse mortgage for tax-free income on your primary residence. It allows you to uh, annuitize, not deferred annuities, uh, but annuitize your, uh, your your mutual funds, your brokerage accounts, your retirement accounts, okay, and not have to necessarily worry about market volatility. So that that's the the idea associated with uh, the, the the policy for those that are planning on using it for retirement income. At the same time, life always throws uh, curveballs at us. It always you know, gives us some challenges that we weren't able to anticipate. So therefore, even if that's your uh, purpose, knowing that the policy has this loan provision, this liquidity allows you a peace of mind. So if there's a medical uh, emergency or if something is needed within your family and you need access to money, this is a way in which you can access that without necessarily interrupting the uh, potential future use of uh, of the policy. Now, of course, these loans have to be paid back. These, and this is the last thing I'll talk about. These loans, okay, they there's interest associated with them. That interest goes to the insurance company. That's an, a common misconception out there with other uh, groups that advocate what what we do and have written books about it. Is somehow magically by using a loan, you're going to have even more interest. That's that's not the case. And so if you look at the loans associated with insurance policies, these loans are coming from the insurance company. Uh, these loans are from their other assets, their other accounts. And if they didn't charge interest on it and they didn't count or book that interest in their accounting uh, as, as revenue, then it would impact the pricing of their other, uh, you know, other types of insurance policies. Uh, it would imp- impact the pricing of these insurance policies, impact the dividends as well. 
And so when a loan is taken and interest is charged, that interest is a revenue source for the insurance company. It goes, uh, it goes to them uh, because they understand opportunity cost more than most other financial institutions. If they were to give a loan with no interest, okay, then it's money that they would not have been able to invest and earn interest. So therefore, you know, they charge interest in the, you know, in the range of what they would have uh, earned in an investment had they not given a loan to me or you or to other policy owners. Okay, that's all we're going to talk about today as far as policy loans are concerned. If you guys have uh, have questions uh, or some follow-up, uh, we have uh, those resources on our show notes. So go to paradigmlife.net. There is a Perpetual Wealth Strategy podcast page, and it will have uh, both the show notes as well as uh, other resources uh, to help you understand the powerful nature of the policy loan. So thanks for joining me today and taking the time to learn more about uh, these powerful benefits uh, that the Perpetual Wealth Strategy is, uh, is, is giving you now that you've implemented the strategy. I can't stress enough how important it is to you know, just maintain an active role in regards to financial education. And I'm grateful that you're dedicating time to learning. Uh, the, this information that's not going to uh, be in a commercial uh, at the Super Bowl. It's, it's uh, information that is really talked about in, in books. And so with all of the stuff that's out there, all the noise that, that's out there, you know, uh, continuing to educate and understand how this, uh, how this applies to you uh, is, re- is really important so that you understand what your options are when you have financial decisions to make. As always, you know, it's been, it's been a, a pleasure to be here. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for the support. Uh, I love doing these podcasts. And as I mentioned before, go to paradigmlife.net uh, and check out the show notes for past episodes. Uh, so show notes for the resources for this episode, but also on there has an archive of all the past episodes as well. Okay, on the next episode, we're going to talk about a, another benefit uh, to a policy, which is uh, asset protection. So how having one of these wealth maximization accounts is going to secure your assets from you know, potential future uh, legal issues. So join us. Uh, join us then. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy Podcast. Be sure to visit the show's official page at paradigmlife.net for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Guest opinions are their own. If you require specific investing, financial, legal, tax, or any other specialized advice, please consult an appropriate professional or a wealth strategist at Paradigm Life. We welcome and appreciate reviews of the show. Head on over to iTunes or Stitcher to leave your review today. And don't forget to subscribe to the show to get access to every new episode and its exclusive content. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.